Hello. So, this isn't a release video, but I thought I would talk a little bit about science and a little bit about game design. The big thing I'm introducing this week is waveguides. Uh, waveguides, uh, basically we've been using klystrons in the tunnel, because they've been very small klystrons with a very low maximum output. And that means that, you know, well, they could fit in the tunnel. But as your energy levels get higher, those microwave emitters, um, it becomes a bad idea to keep trying to stuff them into the tunnel. So instead we stuff them over there somewhere behind massive amounts of bedrock uh, and uh, cool them with a wholly separate cooling system that we don't have to worry about at all. And then we just bring that energy in through waveguides, which are these red pipes. Now real waveguides don't look like red pipes, but due to limitations on how I programmed the engine, uh, they have to look like red pipes until I reprogram the engine. <laughs> which I'm not sure I'll do. For now, they're definitely going to look like red pipes. Once you've introduced these uh, waveguides, it suddenly becomes a lot easier for you to um, uh, actually get the particles to accelerate, because you don't have to generate any electricity. So you've got a nice, slim little RF chamber, um, no giant systems, no heavy power cables, um, and instead you just use all the power that comes in from the waveguide and all you have to do is make sure that it's pulsing correctly and so on and so forth and make sure that it gets cooled. So in many ways this is sort of uh, reverting back to how it was in the beginning of the game where you don't need any kind of sensor data or any of that. But that's just because this level is int introduces the concept more advanced waveguides and RF chambers, they will uh, require pipe, pipe management as well as wire management. And the, the idea is that the game becomes actually difficult when you have to do both at the same time. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about game development as well. Uh, a lot of people who are just getting started in game development uh, think that the hard part of game development is programming, um, or perhaps the hard part is art. And that's just not the case. You can have games that are really fantastic that have terrible art and terrible programming. And that's not, a, that's not to knock the game developers because art and programming are not directly uh, related to game development. Now obviously it's kind of nice if you happen to be uh, a good coder and a good artist, but some of the funnest indie games out there have terrible art and are programmed just, just uh, immeasurably awfully. And that's not doesn't affect the fact that they're good games. No, the hard part about being a game developer is that you have to keep developing your game. Unfortunately, not all content is created equal. Now, when you're playing a game, the mid-game is usually the most fun part, because that's the part where you've been introduced to all of the concepts and you're allowed to run wild. You can go out into the game's world and do whatever you, you, you feel like doing with the concepts that have been introduced. But if you're a game developer, the mid-game content is just nightmarish. Um, it's just not interesting to build. And that's because uh, you already know all of the concepts that are in play, and all you're doing is uh, introducing the player to more opportunities to play around with those concepts. In this, in this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm taking the, uh, the wire juggling, and I'm also introducing it to the pipe side of things, so now you've got wire and pipe juggling at the same time. Now, the early part of the game, you can do a lot of stuff with the early part of the game um, because there is an almost infinite amount of polish to put into uh, things like the UI and the tutorial levels and so on. Because of that, uh, you can spend an unlimited amount of time on the early game. And in fact, I just got another bit of coverage today, and his complaint was that the UI was awful. Um, so I'm probably going to change it out again, I just don't know to what. <laughs> but, uh, in short, the beginning of the game is a lot of work and a lot of fun. You can do it for a long time, you can keep developing that early game forever. And the end of the game is a lot of fun to develop. You can keep developing the end of the game forever, too. Um, you can just play wild. You can go, you know, everything's been introduced. You throw it all at the player. You have just a, a blast. And then you test it and make sure that the player can actually accomplish the things you've been doing. So the early game and the end game, um, they're both a lot of work and a lot of fun. They require you to keep going back and forth and understanding what's going on, and it's just great fun. But the mid-game... 
as a developer, you're just putting stuff in front of the player to let them play around. There's not a whole lot of drive behind it. Uh, and that's the difficult part for me. Now, a lot of people don't have that problem. A lot of developers love the mid-game. In fact, anyone who's ever created an RPG has obviously got a lot of affinity for the mid-game because RPGs are around 95% mid-game, and uh, I love them, and I can't make them. They just... it's, it's just not possible for me to make them. There's too much mid-game content. That said, I'm almost through the mid-game and into the end-game, uh, so this week we will be doing this uh, kind of waveguide stuff, and then next week I'll be introducing, hopefully next week, I'll be introducing the liquid helium uh, supercooled stuff, and that'll be very, very close to the end-game, and I hope that the whole game will be finished by Christmas, although after that, mm, finishing the game involves mostly polishing the early and late game so that people can understand what the hell is going on. <laughs> Anyhow, I expect to release this version sometime tomorrow, Saturday. Um, there are some bugs I need to fix, like uh, for some reason my exchanges have stopped coloring both pipes and I started only coloring one. I'm not sure why that is. Uh, stuff like that. But uh, this and a free play level are going to be in the next version, and I hope that you'll enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs>